Hello my wonderful So Aldo fam and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I am going to show you how I made this beautiful blouse. So this doesn't require any pattern. So this is a perfect project for a beginner. So if you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Aldo and I make sewing tutorials. All my sewing projects are easy to follow and easy to recreate. I would really love it if you are going to subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Thursday at 9 o'clock in the morning central time. Also, don't forget to hit the notification button so you will get notified whenever I post a new video. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started! Before I begin, I want to quickly talk to you about the fabrics that I will be using on today's tutorial. These were from stylishfabric.com. They have a wide range of stylish and affordable fabrics. This was my first time to get some fabrics from them and I will definitely will come back and buy some more. I really love the quality of these fabrics. I am really impressed. You know, I am very picky when it comes to fabrics. And these two fabrics delivered it. I absolutely love the pink one. It's very soft against the skin. It's a jersey knit material perfect for making t-shirts or dresses. It has a good amount of stretch and recovery which I really love. The pattern fabric is a woven fabric. It is very soft and flowy perfect for making blouses or maybe scarves. I will leave the link to their website in the description box below as well as the link to the fabrics that I will be using today. Without further ado, let's go ahead on the tutorial. So the first thing I will do is fold the fabric like this and I'm going to try to smooth out the fabric. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut out the fabric and it's going to be 25 inches long. And that is going to be the length of the blouse. And that's including the one half inch allowances on both top and bottom of the blouse. And then I'm going to cut the center fold so I will have two panels of fabrics. Then I will trim off the selvage just because of this massive tag on the side which I thought is pretty wasteful. Luckily, it was the exact measurements that I will need for the blouse. So the width of the blouse is going to be 22 inches wide. And that includes the one half inch seam allowances on both sides of the fabric. And here I drape the fabric on my body just to make sure that I have enough fabric. So my fabric measurements is 22 inches wide and 25 inches long. And that is including the one half inch seam allowances on all sides. Now I am working on the front panel of the bodice. So I just fold it in half like this. From this corner right here, I'm going to measure down 2 inches. You can go down as far as 3 inches. It totally depends on how deep the neckline you want. And from here, I'm going to measure 6 inches across. And I'm going to mark it with a pin. You just want to make sure that the neck hole is big enough so you can pull the blouse over your head. And then from here, I am going to measure 7 inches and that will be the shoulder slope. And look, it's a perfect measurement. Yay! I love it when that happens. This corner here, I am going to measure down 1 centimeter just to give the shoulder slope because the shoulder is not straight, so you want to slope it down. And then you're just going to draw a curve from the fold to the pin right here. And then I am going to cut it out. And I'm also going to trim off the shoulder slope. Now I am going to be working on the back bodice. 
So pretty much it's the same idea. You just want to make sure that the, the back neck is a little higher than the front neck. Now I'm going to serge it all the way around. If you don't have a serger, you can do a zigzag stitch all the way around. By the way, this fabric is actually a very beautiful fabric to work with. I absolutely love it. I don't have any problem and there is no fraying. It's not a mess and it's not wrinkling after I serge it even though it is some sort of a thin material. So that is a plus. Right after that, I match the two panels right sides together and I pin it along the shoulder seams. To figure out how long or how big the armhole is going to be, I basically just measured around my arms 14 and I divide it into two so it will be 7. So from here, I will measure down 7 inches. This measurement will vary. It all depends on how big your arm is. So if your arm is a little bigger, obviously the armhole needs to be bigger so it, you can move and you won't feel constricted. So I tried on the blouse and it was super baggy. So I decided to take in 3 inches from this corner right here. And it's also totally up to you how you want it to be. So if you don't want to trim it, you can just leave it like this. But it's just going to be more like a square handkerchief blouse, which is kind of cute as well. But it was way too big for me. And then I'll go ahead and trim off the side seams. I will use this piece of fabric as my template. I'm just going to flip it like this. And then I'm going to search the raw edges. If you don't have a serger, you can just zigzag stitch it. It's time to put the blouse together. So now I am just going to join the shoulder seams and I am doing one half inch seam allowances on all sides. Now I'm going to sew the side seam close. And as you can see, there is a curve right here, so you just want to carefully guide your fabric. And you will repeat the exact same process on the other side. After I press the seams, it's time to finish the hemlines. So here I am working on the sleeve hems first. So I just fold it just like this, about one half inch. And you will notice the allowance on the underarms is going to be a little smaller than the front. It's kind of tapering. So as you go down to the underarm seams, it's going to be, it will end up about a quarter of an inch. And that is okay because if you fold it the exact one half all the way around, the hem lines is going to be wrinkling and will pucker. And that is not a good look.
and then I will sew it all the way around and obviously I will repeat the same process on the other sleeve. And here I am hemming the bottom of the blouse. And because this is a beginner project, I decided not to do any fancy neckline. So I just double folded the row edges on the neckline and sew it as close to the edge as possible. Just be careful not to stretch the neckline. To prevent it from unsightly neck gaping which is not pretty to give this blouse some extra detail i decided to add a self tie bow around the neckline i just simply cut out a long strip of fabric about two inches wide and 60 inches long and then I fold it in, right sides of the fabrics are facing each other, and then I sew it all the way around, turn the strip right side out, and then press. And then I sew it on the center back of the blouse. Thanks so much for watching and I hope this tutorial is helpful to you. If it was, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would really love it if you are going to join my So Aldo fam here on my channel. You can also find me on um, Facebook and Instagram. So if you want to go ahead and follow me there. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you might like some of my sewing tutorials that I did in the past. I have over 100 sewing tutorials. I'm going to have all the playlists right here so you can go ahead and check them out. A lot of them are perfect for beginners just like this one. Until next time, bye!